GS man, I'm smart. Here today on a brand new video for tutorials with GS. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to create a cinematic movie style film effect on a picture that you may have within GIMP. And this can look really cool. You have a lot of options to make this as unique as possible if you're going for a certain feel. Uh, you don't have to follow this tutorial exactly, but I am going to give you the tools that you'll need to make this effect. So feel free to play around the settings that we're going to be using today. You don't need to do exactly what I'm doing. In fact, if you have your own image that looks different from this image, you may want to put a few different settings in there. So the first thing we're going to do is duplicate our first layer here. So this is our background. We want to duplicate it. Always want to duplicate everything you're working on so you can see before and after, but not only that, because you want to do non-destructive editing. Now we're going to do three things uh, to this layer first off, and it's all going to be working with curves. So head to your colors up here and go to curves. Now in the curves dialog, we want to work with red, green, and blue. Now, when you're working with these channels, this is how your picture, this, this has the most effect on your picture. That's what I'm trying to say. This has the most effect on the result of your picture. Uh, in general though, the red channel, you want to create an S curve. So you want to darken the darks and you want to brighten the brights, something like that. And, you know, depending on the, the style of picture you have, depending on the style of effect you're going for, you may want to make this higher, you want to make this lower, but in general, go for this S curve. Then for the green channel, we're going to do something very similar. You don't have to do it exactly uh, like, the, like the previous S curve, but you want to sort of keep the same style. As you can see, it is not exact. Uh, you can make it exact if you want, though but it's also good to have a bit of variability here as well. So the same type of S curve with your green channel. And then with your blue channel, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to lighten the darks and we're going to darken the lights. So like that. And as you can see, and as you can see, it's already starting to look a little different and more movie like. So we're going to go ahead and press OK here and we'll be done with our curves. Next, we want to go ahead and head to our colors again and go to hue saturation. And we want to go and lower the saturation by about 50. You can try 40, 60 as well but negative 50 tends to do fairly good and that'll desaturate the colors a little bit. Uh, if you feel like it's desaturating too much, you can go 40 or 30 even, but you wanna have some of those colors desaturated. Next, we'll go to colors again and go to color balance. And here we're gonna work with the shadows and the highlights. Starting off with the shadows first, our first value for red is gonna be negative two, green zero, and our blue we can bump up to 10. However, if you feel like it's a bit too blue for you, you can go maybe somewhat like a seven. I think I'm gonna go seven because I think bumping it to 10 is a bit too blue for me. So that's for our shadows. And then for our highlights, we're gonna go for red two, for green zero, and for blue, uh, maybe negative three around there. And that looks fairly good. So we'll go and press okay on that too. And I forgot to mention, but you also wanna make sure when you do this that you have uh, Preserve luminosity checked. It is checked by default, but if you happen to have it unchecked, make sure you have it checked. So that's a note on there. Next, we're gonna go up to filters. Uh, there's filters, go to noise and pick HSV noise, the first one. And just up the first option to about four, your wholeness. You can keep the other ones three, 10 and 10. That should be fine. Go ahead and press okay on that. And that'll be everything we're doing with this layer. So a lot of color adjustments are happening with this first duplicated layer. Go ahead and duplicate the layer again, and you should have three layers. Now you should have the original, you should have all the color balance layer done in this one, and we're gonna be working with, with a bit more noise here and a vignette in this new layer that we just duplicated here. First, we're gonna go ahead and go to filters again, go to blur, click Gaussian blur, and you want to go for a value anywhere between 5 to 10. If your picture is very big, my picture is about 1,500 pixels. So going for something around 8. If, it go, if your picture is 1920 by 1080, you might want to go for like 10 or 11 maybe. Anything lower than 1,000, you may want to go with 5 or 6, maybe around 5. I'm going to go ahead and go with 8 though. So 8 for both of these values. Go ahead and press OK. And that will give this blurry overlay of the picture. Don't worry, we still have the layer here that's clear, but we're going to be adding a focal point in the middle to make the middle portion sharp, our object sharp, and the background a bit blurry, so we have this nice uh, sharp effect that's focusing on the object. Next, we're going to go up to filters again, go to noise again, 
go to the H HSV noise again, and just the same things you had before, go and apply that again. And then we'll do it one more time, filters again, noise again, HSV again. But this time we're gonna bump to four up to six and you keep everything else the same also. Then we're gonna go ahead and add a layer mask and just right click your layer here and click add layer mask, which is right here, add layer mask. Make sure you select white full opacity, go ahead and press add. Go ahead and grab your blend tool or your gradient tool on the left here. Make sure that your foreground color is black and not white. I'm gonna go ahead and switch it real quick. Make sure your gradient type is foreground to transparent as we have here. Also make sure that your uh, type is bilinear. By default, it's on linear, so make sure you have it to bilinear. Make sure your pattern is set to none. Then we wanna go ahead and create a gradient from the start of our object down to the end of our object. If you wanna make a straight line, hold down control, and it'll make a straight line or an angled straight line. Otherwise, you can go freeform without holding control. And we're gonna go ahead and just go straight down here. And as you can see, our car becomes a bit more sharper. Now you can repeatedly do this, and the more you do this, the car becomes more sharper. But I think uh, for, for, for the effect that we're going for, I'm just gonna go ahead and sharpen it once. As you can see it on the right side here, uh, as we continue to do this, the darker our mask gets. Next, we're gonna go and make a new layer. So I'm gonna go click new layer here, transparent layer. Then we're gonna add a vignette over this. So I'm gonna go and grab my ellipse tool here next to the rectangle tool and just get to the edge of your picture and create an ellipse to the edges of your picture like that. So there's a big oval around it. Then go up to select, click feather. And for the feather, you wanna have a fairly large number. If your picture is very big, go for like 150, 200 maybe. If your picture is small, you can go for something like 50 or 75. But try different options with the feathering here. I like 200, it's been working good with me for this size of a picture. And then we're gonna go to select and click invert, grab our paint bucket tool, make sure you have black selected, and just go ahead and press on the outsides here and you see we have a nice vignette here. If you wanna make the selection go away, go to select and click none, and there we go. Now you also want to play around with the opacity here. Before that, we wanna change the layer mode. For some pictures, overlay will work really good, uh, but for our picture, it doesn't look that great. As you can see, that's before, that's after. Actually, overlay works fairly good here. However, you can also pick grain merge, and I think I like grain merge a bit more than overlay. So I think those modes will work, but at the end result, you wanna make sure that your vignette is about 50%, 40% opacity, maybe even 45%. And as you can see, that gives us a nice, a nice border of darkness around the car here. So this is a nice little vignette here. And maybe I like overlay more. No, I like, I like Grain Merge more. Grain Merge does a really good job at it. So that's what we're gonna have there. Next, we're gonna create another new layer. So click New Layer here, make sure it's transparent again. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our Blend tool, our Gradient tool. Make sure we select white this time as the foreground color. Make sure you have your layer mode set to Overlay this time. Make sure the opacity is to about 50%. Uh, if, if your object's a bit lighter or darker, you may need, bit, may need to play around this uh, opacity here. But regardless, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna go ahead and brighten up our object just a bit like that. As you can see, that lightens everything up a bit. This is before, this is after. And the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add our movie stripes in the top and the bottom. And that's very easy to do. Just go to image, go to canvas size, and then canvas size here. Depending on how big you want your stripes to be, I think I'm only gonna have my stripes about 150, maybe 100 on each side. So we're gonna go ahead and increase our height by 200. Right now we're at 788, so we're gonna go to 988. And then make sure you click center here so that your picture stays in the center. You can go ahead and press resize. And as you can see, that gives us these uh, black bars. Like I said, if you want your bars to be bigger or smaller, then just uh, lower your canvas size that you're increasing the height by, and you'll be fine. Go ahead and grab your paint bucket tool, change the foreground color to black, and then grab another new layer here, make a new layer, press OK. Bring that layer all the way down to the bottom and go ahead and press the black on this little area here with your paint bucket tool. If it's not working, you have to go to select none. That means you have your, that you have a selection around your image. Once that's done though, 
you can go ahead and press like that. And as you can see, that gives us the black bars. And if you want to see the before and after now, what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and uh, uncheck our main layer. The original layer was this right here. So we're going to go ahead and just uncheck that because we want to save that. And everything else we're going to go and put on. Then we'll go to layer. We'll click new from visible, which will give us a visible layer. And then as you can see, when we move this up, and then as you can see, this is after our effects. This is before our effects. Let's zoom in a bit. As you can see, before, after. We have a nice cinematic movie style effect. It looks really cool. So this is a very easy effect to accomplish. You don't need the black movie bars if you don't want them, but they're there for some people who may want them. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial. Hopefully you liked it and hopefully you learned something. If you did, go ahead and leave a like on the video. If any questions or comments, suggestions to make this better, any other tips that I may have missed or didn't go over, go and leave a comment down below. I'll be answering your questions there as usual. And if you like this video, you can subscribe to the channel as well. We have plenty of other GIMP tutorials. We're getting close to about 50 GIMP tutorials. So if you're new to GIMP, if you want to catch up on your skills, if you want to improve, we have lots of tutorials on GIMP. I'll leave a link to the playlist on screen right now. There should be a card on screen. You can click that and it'll bring you to the GIMP playlist. Lots of valuable information, lots of valuable uh, content on the channel. So go ahead and subscribe. would highly encourage you. would love to have you on board. And if you want to donate a dollar to my Patreon page, you can do so as well. Click the card on the top right-hand corner of the screen. It'll bring you to the page. And if you want to check out the vlogging channel, the gaming channel, the advice channel, the music channel, links are in the description as well as on the end screen. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching as always. And this is GS Smart, and I'll be back soon. You think? Don't go anywhere.